It's a pufferfish rave. This is the best update ever. Hello, my name is Grian and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be showing you some building tricks and tips with the new blocks that are brought in with the aquatic update 1.13 to Minecraft. Now this is a snapshot, normally I wait for the full release to come out, but I think there's more than enough here to do a video on. And trust me, buckle yourself in because there is a lot of stuff and I found some pretty cool glitches. Having said that, I can't guarantee that all of these will make it to the full release as I'm pretty sure I've found some interesting bugs. Okay, so I'm going to assume that none of you know anything about this update, although I'm guessing a lot of you already know all of the new stuff. So I'm gonna briefly go over everything new, nothing, nothing too slow, I'm just gonna go whiz over everything. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? Well, the first thing is we get these like faceless pumpkins, nothing much to say. We finally get some slabs for the prismarine, dark prismarine and the brick slabs. It's amazing. All of the things that we need to be able to use these blocks more efficiently has been given to us. Absolutely fantastic. And a personal favorite of mine for this update is the trapdoor variations, the pressure plates and the buttons. That will come in later to show that it is a huge thing for us builders, especially the spruce. Okay, so moving on, we have basically blocks that existed before, but they have now been made available in the inventory itself. So, if we look here, smooth sandstone, smooth stone have all been added to the creative inventory. And I actually mentioned that in a previous video, that it didn't make sense that these blocks existed in the game, but we didn't have access to them in the normal inventory way. So, thank you, Mo Yang, for putting that in. And same with these log blocks here they're six-sided they're all the same again these were available but only through commands and we got a surprise new block that I wasn't expecting at all is the stripped logs these are absolutely fantastic I'm gonna show you a few examples using these blocks later on but I absolutely love them and then of course we've got some new water mechanics so as you can see there's water surrounding that fence post there instead of having air around it same with the iron bar and there's so many more there's so many tricks that i want to show involving the new water mechanics and then we've got the coral and we got this random dried kelp block which did surprise me somewhat but it's, it's very useful and we'll see that later and then we've got all the corals all of these are very pretty blocks the only downside of course is that they have to be adjacent to some water to retain their color if not, they become these dead coral blocks here. So even if I select this red coral, if it's not next to a water source, it is dead and it's gray. But these gray blocks are just as useful as the colored ones, as we'll see later on. And then we've got some more plants, actual corals that need to be placed underwater. We've got kelp, which is this brand new animated plant, along with seagrass, small and large. All three of these are fantastic. It's the first time that something truly animated in this fashion has made it into the game, which I think is a really big step for the game's style, which is really cool. We've got a couple of new mechanics. The magma here actually draws down people when they're in water. So as you can see, I'm sinking at a, a sort of slow rate and it can be hard to swim out of that. And this is more like a bubble bath. It's just pushing me upwards. We also got turtle eggs, which were a bit of a challenge to find a use for, but they are very pretty and very unique, so I'm sure something will come out of that later on. So that was a brief overview of all of the new stuff. Right, so let's get into it. The first thing, and probably very obvious thing using the trapdoors, is that you can actually make yourself some actual barrels of water now. Instead of having a fake crate where you just place it around like this, you can now use these trapdoors, which, ha which have no holes in them at all. And then you can actually place some water inside so that it actually has some aesthetic use. Same with the dark oak trapdoors. And you can take it one step further by making some like animal troughs. Of course, the animals in Minecraft don't actually need to drink water, but it's nice to sort of include all that kind of stuff in farms anyway. So by wrapping around these spruce stairs like so, you can make a little chair and then section it off by placing some trap doors and then putting the water on the staircase itself and it won't go anywhere. And even if you do that, but it will flow if you break one of the trap doors. Moving on, 
This may have crossed your mind, but basically I made a couple of sewage pipes, which you may want in a larger build or in a cityscape or something like that. These could be extra useful for those large scale projects. Look, I just put a big pipe here with some iron bars and then the water itself actually looks like it's flowing out of it, which is really, really cool. And you can even make a small one by just making a square using the cobblestone stairs. However, there's a weird glitch with water underneath the staircase, which is, is really strange. So I'm guessing that is just a bug and that will be taken care of. But you can do the same on here with like, fences and stuff. You just, there you go. It's, it's a very easy thing to do to have the water flowing out of the pipe. It's a very cool technique that I suppose you could do before, but it's because you're able to place the water in these staircases that allows you to make it look even better. Next up, I wanted to show you something that doesn't look particularly good how I've laid it out here, but it's just a proof of concept. So basically, you can put farmland adjacent to water sources even if they are inside a staircase or a slab, meaning we can essentially make some very tiny water sources for our farms. For example, here is just a slab version, but you will fall into it, but then you won't sink so much that you can't walk out. So essentially you can create irrigation systems within these staircases themselves. And if you want to travel pretty fast along, you can press down control and swim along, which is much faster than walking. It's, it's more fun as well. Or if you don't want to step on it at all, instead of using lily pads on top of these water sources as we previously did, you just put them inside a staircase and you can walk along and there's no chance of you falling in whatsoever. And the great thing is all of your farmland will become wet, which is exactly what we want, but we don't want to fall in the water as we do it. So that's just a very brief proof of concept. I really want to see someone make a massive farm using that system. Another small idea, again using the new water mechanic technique, is by creating actual sewers on the side of a road. So imagine that this is a big cityscape and we're walking along. Here is an actual sewer and you can't really see it, but there are some drains down there as well. So you could really make something cool here and there are multiple designs that would work. And then, of course, again using the water mechanics, a big thing is you can make some pretty cool waterfalls now. Water is, I wouldn't say, it doesn't behave for you, but you can manipulate it in ways that you couldn't before. So instead of just sitting on top of this staircase, it actually sits on there, and that's the smallest we can get out of it. And then it will flow more gently, I suppose, so it, it doesn't just flow absolutely everywhere. So we can create much nicer waterfalls for ponds and all that kind of stuff. And these dead corals actually make a pretty good, nice mix with all of these cobblestone and all of the other gray blocks. We've got so many gray blocks in Minecraft now, it's astounding. Right, so that was just to do with the water mechanics, those few there. Now I want to show you some of the things we can do with the new blocks themselves. So first up, I want to show you a bathroom. Not too exciting, but there are some pretty cool tricks that you can do. Uh, here is straight away some good use of the stripped logs and the trap doors, which look like shutters and windows and all that kind of stuff and you can actually make a proper bath now, which is one of the big features of this example that I wanted to show you. Because you can make baths very easily using cobblestone, you, you can just place water in them and it actually does look like a run bath, which we couldn't do before very effectively. And the same with a sink, you can put the water in the sink itself. So there's lots of cool things there, and I want to point out that you can use trap doors for the roof, particularly the dark oak trap door, not only does it look like chocolate, but it actually looks like a roof tile as well, particularly with a palette like this one. Another trick that I want to show you is the fact that pots, for some strange reason, you can now just place them anywhere. Yep, I'm not just showing you all the new stuff, I'm showing you some of the stuff that we've discovered while experimenting with everything in this game. So, if I remove the block, the pot actually stays there. But there's this weird bug that I found, and if you look from above, you can't see through the pot at all. But if I go underneath, it's a, you can see through it. It's, you know, you could see anything through there. Even if I place a block up here, I can then see that block. Very, very strange, and I imagine that's not intentional, but I can then place as many pots as I like. Meaning, we can do some pretty cool tricks. 
We can put flower pots on top of levers, on top of glass panes, on top of end rods, and there's all sorts of things that could come from that in terms of interior decoration. You probably expected me to mention this right at the start, but we can make aquariums now. We can put fish in aquariums. We can decorate it with coral and grass and everything new in this update and it will be such a really nice decoration for any interior house, provided that you have enough space. So this is just an example using some of the new blocks, especially these spruce trap doors, which are officially my new favorite thing about this update. Forget everything else, this is my new favorite thing. And the dark oak bark and all that kind of stuff, but it's just a proof of concept. I will be doing an entire video on how to make some excellent looking aquariums. So bear with me on that one, we will get there eventually. Next up, I wanted to show you these dead corals and how they can be used in different ways. Because they are grey, although they do have like a little bit of purple in them, we can use them with our grey builds very easily. They've got some very strange patterns and you could make some murals out of them if you want. It could look a bit like artwork or wallpaper, all very useful for that kind of build. Now I've shown this a million times, but we can actually do it in vanilla now. You can make trees with the six-sided bark block and you will not have to see any of the interior bits of the wood at all, making it look very clean and more realistic because you wouldn't normally see those in reality, would you? So that is a really cool feature that you can now do just by grabbing them from your inventory itself instead of having to use some sort of command. So that's really cool. Next up, another interior design and another bathroom. Again, just demonstrating that you can use the bricks as a bath and all that kind of stuff. You can even make a shower sink instead of a bath if you have one. But the main thing about this one is the kelp block itself. It's a very, very strange one because the pattern is offset. It's a very weird one. Like this is an equal to this side. And it means that we can make a really, really nice floor block out of this. It is, it is honestly very, very strange but I really, really like it, especially when it comes to a kitchen or a bathroom tile design. There's nothing quite like it, so it really does fit if you can be bothered to collect that much kelp. <laughs> so moving on, another use of the kelp block is as wall art. You can actually just put it inside. Instead of using a painting, for example, you could just put it inside a wall and it looks like modern art. Similarly, you can put the turtle eggs on top of an end rod and it looks like either a lamp or modern art. I, I think it's up to you which one, maybe maybe both. I'm, I'm not sure. Modern art is, you know, eye of the beholder and all that. But another use for that. And I must admit, I did struggle to find a use for the turtle eggs, especially as they break if you, if you jump on them too much. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it makes a very satisfying sound, though. Next up is another use for the trap doors. These ones in particular, because you can see through them with their transparency and they've got a really nice pattern, you could put some coloured blocks behind them and they look like paintings themselves as well. I know it can get boring with the, new, with the old Minecraft paintings themselves, so you can find more interesting ways of decorating your house. And you can make a really cool table using the new trapdoors, especially with the spruce one because it just works so well with everything. Next up, I want to show you a more complete design that you can use using various new things from this update. So there's, as you can see, quite a lot to take in, but I'll, I'll go through it rather slowly so that we can not miss anything at all. So let's start with the floor itself. It's raised off of the ground, which is typical of an Asian style, particularly Japanese in this case. Now these here, stripped birch log and the oak log, if you place them in a particular pattern, sort of, one, two, one, two, and alternate them, you can imitate tatami, which is sort of a mat made out of straw in Asian cultures. And it's a very, very cool thing to be able to do, which we weren't able to do before. We actually used these dark oak pressure plates as seats. The only unfortunate thing is we made the table out of trap doors, and if you sit on them, it, it, does, it does collapse through, which it obviously isn't ideal. And we can now place pots on trapdoors, which we weren't able to do before. So we can actually put cups on there as well. So that's two things that we actually did there. And we use some more of these trapdoors as decorations. It just offers us a lot more use because before we were limited to the single oak trapdoor. Now in this situation, for example, 
it just doesn't look as nice and as clean and it doesn't match the whole style especially with these holes in them as well so by using the birch ones and the spruce ones which have no transparency whatsoever it fits a lot better you can also see that we use the dried kelp block in a similar fashion as we did over there and we created some japanese style doors that you know slide along obviously they don't slide at all they just open up in sections but we can kind of imitate it by putting the trap doors either side of this block just by facing this way or by placing them here and we can sort of make it look like there are two sliding doors either side on the roof above we've got the stripped spruce log mixed in with some planks and there's just various ways to use the new blocks all here so if you do like building in japanese style or asian styles perhaps take in some of these blocks because their very modest coloring makes them perfect for this kind of build. Right, moving on, that, that took a while to get through. This is a very simple one. You are now able to put flower pots on top of fences as well. And I thought it would look really cool as like a tiki torch, especially if you've got some kind of beach build or a you know island or whatever, you could put some tiki torches there. However, you cannot light them on fire at this stage, so... It will just be decorative in that respect but i'm sure there will be lots of different ways that people use these pots being able to be placed anywhere thing so now i've got a couple of house designs to show you so these are again just using some of the new blocks in different ways so this is a very famous style that i've done lots of times which is sort of like a desert house and i just replaced the normal sandstone or sand with smooth sandstone and it works really well i replaced the normal log with stripped logs and I actually put some of the stripped birch log as a base to this house, which makes it look really nice with the contrast. And I put in some buttons there for good measure as well. And, and you can, as you can see, made some pretty nice shutters as well. So overall, I feel like that style of build has been improved by being able to use all of these new blocks. Next up, you might have expected this one. This is just a very simple log cabin, but this time using stripped dark oak. Now, let me try and explain why this is important. So, previously, if we made a log cabin, it would be using these blocks here, actual log blocks. But you can see that there's no differentiation between these two. So in you, when you stack them up, you can't really tell that they're logs. The difference is, with the stripped ones, there's a dark patch right here between the two. So when they're stacked on top of each other, it really does look like logs are being stacked on top of each other, which gives this build in particular a really nice look. And then I just had them overlay each other and stick out slightly, and it works really, really well. I also used the trap doors to overhang some things to give it a bit more detail. But again, that's kind of a preference thing. More shutters, and you, you get the idea. Next up, I just wanted to show you the coral and how it could be used as a wallpaper. We only got to see one block earlier on, but if you put some water behind the wall itself, imagine this in a bedroom, you could use this as a really nice patterned wallpaper. The same with all of these, really. They work really well as a patterned wallpaper, maybe even more so than the terracotta blocks, which I think can be a little bit over the top sometimes. If I compare the yellow glazed terracotta, that look, it does look like a kitchen. Um, it does look like a kitchen wallpaper, to be fair. But this one's just a bit more mellow, mellow yellow. Okay, so next up is another aquarium design, but again, utilizing all of the new blocks and stuff that we've already seen. This is actually a turtle aquarium, and I only put two in here because if you put three, they breed like mad, and the, it's just full of them. So you could create some really cool aquarium designs, and like I said, we will get back to that. It doesn't have to be fish, you can have a couple of turtles if you can coax them into your aquarium itself. We are coming towards the end now, and here is another kitchen design, again using some of the blocks. There are so many ways that you can use these blocks that they can't all be shown in one example, so this is just another one. So we got a lot of our normal techniques, you know, fridge and cabinets and stove and all that kind of stuff, but we actually put an aquarium inside the kitchen itself, use some kelp blocks to decorate the walls, and put some water on the actual table itself, to try and give it a little bit of a different touch and you can use all of these trapdoors in many different ways as you can see here sort of lace them over the top 
But the one trick that I really wanted to point out here are these hanging, quote, lights. So this is a very strange thing to, to do, but it, it worked quite well. If you take a flower pot and you place it in the air floating and you put a cactus on it and then place end rods underneath, it connects up so perfectly, it's so flush. Yes, it's green and weird, but it really does look like a system of modern lights that are shining down. Now, it's weird because the cactus does vanish if you look upwards, but I think that's all the better. Makes it all quirkier if you ask me. But that is a really weird but cool design that has come out of the changes to the flower pots. So hopefully you're getting a bit of inspiration from how you could use all of these different blocks. Moving on, of course, you can now make a swimming pool. And we've just made it out of the prismarine stuff to show how that can be used. And of course, you get the new swimming animation, which is absolutely fabulous. I really like this. This is this is a real step in, in, in a direction that looks a bit more modded for Minecraft, but I'm not complaining. I think it's really cool. I think the ocean and water mechanics are seriously outdated. And you can make a hot tub by putting soul sand, which of course pushes bubbles up. You can sit in here with a couple of your friends and talk about the weather, which is always really nice. You can make some pretty cool chairs as well, just using the trap doors. And anything that you could use oak trap doors before, you just replace it with a better color now and it will look even better. So that's an obvious one that you can make swimming pools. Next up is like an aquarium showcase itself. So you can place water behind or encase water. There's no barrier blocks or anything here. We're just using trap doors. And you can place coral in the water itself and you can make like a little aquarium display. So you could put fish in there, but I have a feeling that they might just eventually swim out of there and it could be a colossal waste of time. However, it seems to still work here, but I just can't guarantee if, they, if they'll behave themselves or not. But you can essentially make a pretty cool aquarium and there are different ways to demonstrate the trapdoor usage here. All of them just simply block the water from flowing out. And I'm sure there are many other ways to do that that will come to light later on. Moving on, now this is really cool. Now I am like 90% sure that this is a glitch because as you can see, the water hits this sand block here and doesn't fly off and drown everything and drench everything with water. Same with these corals. Meaning that if this stays in the game for the full release of this update, you could decorate your house with corals and kelp and whatever else. Now there's a very specific way on how you do this. So I'll, I'll quickly demonstrate how to do this and you can try and experiment yourself as well to see how this works for you. So I essentially placed a sand block, put the trap doors around it, and then I ha you have to make yourself a water source at the top, but you need to make sure that it is all blocked up around the bottom source so that it flows down straight like that. And then you place the kelp block and that happens. That's completely normal. You then just block it up and you can do this all the way up the top, especially with kelp because it is, is it does go bigger. So you can place them all the way up and yet yeah, that will happen completely normal. But as you remove them, the kelp will stay in place, which is really, really interesting. Now, I also found a new secret that is kind of different here, but for example, on these ones, I couldn't find a way for this to work with the water source being gone. So all I did was place the sand there and that happened with the seagrass. But with the kelp, it broke and it only destroyed the top layer. So as long as the kelp is three high and you place a sand here, it will then leave it. So we've got this weird situation where it looks like we've got this aquarium. I mean, we can delete this as well. It, it, it's completely cosmetic. And you can do the same with any one of these. If I take the yellow coral plant, for example, let's give that a go, shall we? So if I put water in this box here, I place the yellow coral plant, I delete the sand, and there we have a floating yellow coral. And the weirdest thing, you can delete the block underneath it as well, and it just floats. How bizarre is this? This this is why I'm saying this is 90% sure that this will be a, 
bug and get fixed because this is so strange. So, so strange. And I don't know. Oh, I could have sworn that was too high when we left it. There's obviously a lot more experimenting that needs to be done here. And I wonder what happens. Okay, so that one does get destroyed if you destroy the bottom block. So I'm assuming that that will be the case with these ones. They're perhaps just not as up to date yet. So that's that's interesting. And I thought I'd share that with you just in case it does make it through because this could be an excellent way to decorate your house with different plants that aren't just in a pot or whatever. So moving on, another bathroom design. Can you believe it? And I think there's actually another bug here that I wanted to show you. And trust me, this is sort of this last bit. All of the bits here are just sort of bugs that I found that I really want to show you. And I've got to show you the best one in a minute. So this one here is a dispenser with a water bucket in it. Now, if you press it, switch it on, it does dispense the water into the quartz stairs. However, now this is, this is what I'm sure is a bug because dispensers, as far as I'm aware, don't just make blocks vanish. And this is just so strange. Now, if I take this dispenser and I take this water bucket and I put it in here and I activate it, it dispenses it, right? Normal stuff. But it also sucks the water back in. Now, I don't, I don't know if that's normal or not, but it, it all seems particularly fishy to me. <laughs> Get it? Aquatic, uh, whatever. whatever. Um, so anyway, back to the bathroom itself. There are actually a few more tricks in here that aren't involving dispensers destroying things. So this here is another use of the trapdoor. I know, trapdoors are just so good. So if you place them in alternating fashion, so if you go like so, you can make yourself a pretty cool looking like wooden floor and i'm sure most of you will have seen these especially in like public swimming pools and stuff you can make a, a little walkway made out of wood that's slightly raised and it's like little platforms which is really cool and you can also use the flower pots here underneath some sea lanterns or glowstone and it actually does look like lights especially when you look up because from this angle you can't actually see the top of the flowers it really does look like lighting and that's really cool you can also make a pretty cool shower as well again something that we could do before so yeah there's all sorts of really cool things now on to my favorite discovery of this entire update and it's something you can only really get away with in creative mode, but I've got to show you. So I've got a little square here, I've filled it with water, and then I take my pufferfish egg and I just spawn as many as I can. Now you could do this the long way with buckets full of pufferfish, as, as long as you have many. So I'm gonna place as many as possible. And you can see I've actually got the poison there. Now eventually there'll be too many and they'll start dying. But watch this, as soon as I take out this water it's a puffer fish rave this is the best update ever <laughs> but eventually all things all good things must come to an end and the puffer fish dance until they drop it's just my favorite thing about this update it's so stupid as well there's not really a building trick or tip well, well, whatever. There's a lot of puffer fish, uh, friend. There's a lot of fun to be had by experimenting with all of these fish. <laughs> and finally, this may not look like much, but this is another little glitch that I thought could potentially be used as a trap if you are willing to give it a bit of time. Now, I was just experimenting with what would happen if I put a lot of fish in the same place. So what I did was I got the cobblestone slab and I made it only half a block full of water and then I spawned a lot of cod in this, like a lot of cod. And eventually the fish don't really know what to do because the AI is pretty interesting and they sort of eventually clump up into the corners. Now I then introduced some tropical fish as well if I could right click them, there we go, just a few of them. Now these are a different size, so they sort of hang around in the middle while these guys fill up the spaces in the corners. And all you've got to do is trick someone to fall into this place and they get pushed around so much that in survival mode, it is an absolute pain to get out of here. Imagine that this is made of obsidian, this little box here. I could not get out if you, if you try, if I tried, I'd have to kill all of the fish to get out, which could be, it's just a little bit, little bit of fun. 
you can make some really interesting traps using these fish that, that push you around. For example, what you could do is have this little trap here that you fall down that you can't get out of by any other means than killing the fish, which is actually a lot harder than you th would think to get rid of all of these. And you could slowly have the lava like tipping down this hole. And if you don't kill the fish quick enough and get out, you are going to get guilt. So that's just a quick trap idea because that's how my mind works in these things. So I wanted to show you as much information as I could and all of our ingenuity and creativity. And we definitely didn't even scratch the surface with half of the stuff that is possible with this update. And I've got to admit, this has been my favorite update in a very long time. There's just been so many good things added here. And I really feel like Mojang have really perhaps listened to the community on this one because there's a lot of really cool things and some very cool surprises. And I absolutely love all of the textures that are added as well. There's some very fun glitches that I'm sure will get tweaked in the near future, but hopefully all of this stuff will have given you a bit of inspiration using the new update in Minecraft. So there's nothing else to say, but thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Pajazzle and Pleasant Moon for helping me put together all of these ideas. And I look forward to experimenting more because I've got at least four videos that involve this new update. So I look forward to showing you those. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.